Hey everyone, welcome to the Mom and Dad Cuss a Little podcast. This is a show where we're going to give you a realistic look at parenting, marriage, and everything in between. Uh, no sugar coating here. We have four boys and it's chaos. So sit back, relax if you can, and enjoy. Hello. Hello. I'm Adam. You sound like a 900 number. I, I, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> you have one of those? I have one of those. I, I think Rihanna. every guy has one of those. <laughs> yes, before we, before we get on the phone sex line tangent, I'm Adam. <laughs> I'm Rihanna. And this is the... <laughs> so sh- I know. <laughs> it's a mess already. This is, welcome to the show. Everybody. Welcome to the show. This is where we, we, we tackle the, the parenting and, and and family life without any sugar coating or BS or whatnot. Yep. And because you didn't warn them explicit content because we don't filter ourselves. Oh, no. No, no, we don't. After the boys go to bed, we start the show and it's our chance to just fucking let everything out. Yep. That's right. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> I feel I I feel like I I wasn't explicit enough because you already dropped an f bomb and I just said damn. Oh. Uh, oh well. Context. Are you feeling inadequate? <laughs> I feel like my expletives were were insufficient. Oh well, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> Hope springs a turtle. It's not a turtle. I'm pretty sure it's something about a turtle. I I no. <laughs> So, how was your week? It was stressful. Oh, mine too. I, I've been sick, as you may have noticed last week, and I'm, I'm, I'm still, I've finally gotten over as it. As you may have noticed, like, we don't live together. I'm talking to the people out there. Oh. Hello. I've, I've been sick. Well, we've all been sick, but I'm, I'm, I think I've probably gotten it the worst most recently. I, it probably lasted the longest for me. Yeah. Because it just kind of, it started with, oh, I thought it was a sinus infection, turned into a just pain in the neck, literally cough and sore throat and like yeah, almost chest, bronchitis. Almost bronchitis and just, yeah, just really tore me up. And like, I, I tried to work through it. I just like, no, nope, fuck it. I got to, I got to you know, like, man up. And just take the time off of work and just get myself medicated and flushed with fluids and yeah. and get this out of my system. So I'm doing much better. I still I'm still trying to get the crud out of my chest, I guess, but I got better. A little better. <laughs> I was dead at the time. So I I'm I'm getting the crud out of my chest. But other than that, I, I'm doing much better. I'm not I don't feel like I'm dying anymore. I'm glad to hear it. <clears throat> and how are you, dear? I'm stressing. I'm always stressed. I think like it's my safety blanket. I have to yes. stress about stress something. is your safety blanket. I have to have something to stress about, or it's just not. What was what was it in a peanuts pig pen? The pig pen. Uh, the, the, the one that had the that literally had a, a safety blanket. You're like a, Linus. no Linus. Oh yeah, pig pen was the one that was Dirty. completely completely yeah completely. If you like took the two of them because your safety blanket is the black cloud around you. <laughs> Kind of, so yeah. That's basically it. I have it's to have not something dirt. To it's the over. black cloud over your head is your safety blanket. Kind of, yeah. So this week and for the next few weeks, my stress is family vacation. Which is going to be a, a fun theme coming up as we get ready, I guess. Yeah, no, we'll definitely talk about it on the show. But right now, it's just in the planning stages and trying to figure out kind of logistically and financially how everything's going to come together. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still, I'm coming off of being sick too, so I'm yeah, like all you were, you were sick too, and, and you've got like allergies like a mofo. So. Yeah, I'm allergic to my fucking dog. Um, so yeah, just trying to like figure all that out, but still keep the house running because I'm the one who controls the budget book and, you know, the bank accounts and everything. I know where every penny goes. You didn't like my system, so I just kind of turned it over to you. Your system left us overdrawn a couple times, so I said... At the time, we were totally financially fucked, mm-hmm. and it kind of... we At the time, we couldn't have, we couldn't afford our mean... Or our our lifestyle as it was. It wasn't That's a matter true. of my... It was my 
versus yours. It was a, we just can't afford what we need to pay <laughs> every month situation. We just weren't making enough money and we had you know, like, Hey, our overhead was over our heads. It really was, but I like that one. I just kind of pulled that out of my ass. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I've taken over, I've been in control of it for several years now. So now it's my stress to worry about <clears throat> daily, daily, but I don't know. It, it's once you get it and once you have a groove, it's a lot easier. Yeah. And once you figure out the system that works for you and works for your family, yeah. then, you know, run with it. Mm-hmm. Don't try to, you know, oh, well, this person's doing this. Maybe we should incorporate that. Like if what, if what you're doing is working, you know, don't, don't fix it. If it's if not it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because exactly. Just because, and I think it's like, and you know, credit to anybody if they follow like, uh, what's his name? Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. I was going to say Dave Jackson. I was like, not Dave Jackson. Dave, the different don't guy. know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, but, uh, if you like follow Dave Ramsey and that works for you, great. Yeah. But <clears throat> doesn't work. For doesn't us. work for us. And, you know, I think he's a little arrogant. I don't like his style. He kind of is, but I mean, he's got some good points and yeah. some things that we like some aspects that we will eventually incorporate once we kind of get there. Yeah. But the, the, the skeleton of his planning and his yeah. system is, is sturdy. It's yeah. the, if like not everybody can flesh out his plan, the right, the way that he says to do it. Exactly. So, so our issue is debt. We have a lot of debt, whether yeah. it's debt that was in collections because, you know, Reader's Digest version of a backstory here. Um, Adam got hurt, what, not even a year after we got married? Not it was. I was out of work at our first anniversary. Yeah. So you got hurt at work, um, and it wasn't your typical on-the-job injury. Yeah. I was injured upon yeah. at work. Yeah, I don't Story know. Story for another day. I don't know if you want to go into it now, but, you know, Reader's Digest version is Adam was hurt at work and I was freshly out of, I had freshly stopped attending college because I just had a baby. Um, <clears throat> so the two of us were jobless for six months, at least. At least. And um, we still had bills to pay. You know, you had a life before you met me. Yeah. You had, I had a, credit I had very, cards. You I had, had a very <laughs> active, uh, finan- uh, socially awesome, financially irresponsible single life. Yeah. But at had, the time, I was a single guy who made a lot of money and who could afford to have new cars every couple of years, brand new cars every couple of years and new motorcycles and spend lots of money and have lots of credit cards because I could pay it yeah. when I was single. Rude. And, I, and well... <laughs> Be fair. You were basically living off of a mini, a, a minimum income, income and uh, like financial financial aid. aid from college. Yeah. And so when we got married, I basically had to absorb, you know, your maintenance. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. How am I going to phrase this? I'm so screwed. Yeah, you were sleeping on the yeah, but I had, But I basically had to you know, take on that financial responsibility. Yeah. Okay, I had to now... I was financially responsible for two people. And suddenly my, my ability to keep up my uh, expenses was not as strong. Yeah. And then we had Charlie and then I'm kind of in a, Oh shit situation. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So you got hurt. We were out of work for six months. All of your stuff that you had already established went into collections. Yeah. In that time we relocated from Texas and moved out to Arizona. Yeah. And at the time we were really, really irresponsible. Like looking back on it, there was so much that we could have done different to keep things out of collections or to work with the lenders or, yeah. you know, we didn't know I mean, at the time we didn't know what we know now. Exactly. We've learned a lot in the process. Yeah, no, we really have and a lot about budgeting and now living within our means back then we were young and dumb. 
<clears throat> I'm still young. You are not. Yeah, because apparently you don't age and I, I do. I'm 25. Ish. Shut up. No one likes you. Um, Am I adopted? You might be. <laughs> I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut a clip out of you calling me adopted. And I'm gonna send it to mom. I don't care. <laughs> what is she gonna do that she hasn't already done to me? Whop you with a newspaper. I don't know. I'm pretty sure she's done that. <laughs> I've gotten in trouble with your mom so many times <laughs> because you say shit like I'm adopted. Well, she bet she wishes you were. That's just me. <laughs> I love you. So you say. <clears throat> whatever. <laughs> oh, I love you. Never mind. Whatever. But you, now we are finally, finally, finally getting to the point, And yes, just now, finally six getting years. to the point six years later where we're paying off all that crap that had collected. We're living within our means. We're living responsibly. I mean, we're, we're living as responsibly as we comfortably can. Yeah. We've recently moved and it was actually a downgrade from what we had. We had this huge two story, four bedroom, two living room, two car garage. It was like almost 2000 square feet. Lots of twos. I think it was, I think it was more than 2000. <laughs> I think it was closer to like 24. It was huge. Uh, yeah. So we had this huge house with, you know, nice big backyard and grass and, trees and just all kinds of yeah. you know high massive house. very large house yeah with and i counted 15 windows just downstairs fuck it's a lot of fucking windows. and and the 15 windows is is actually it, it's relevant when you live in arizona especially <laughs> because basically every single wall downstairs other than the garage when actually the garage went had windows but they were painted, they were painted over. over they were painted over had sunlight coming through them. So at any point in the day, there was direct sunlight coming through into the ground level of that house. Yep. In and Arizona, know, where it gets to 115 rises. degrees. Yep. And then all that heat went upstairs to where all the bedrooms were. Ugh. And it made it a million fucking degrees in the house. It made you just want to die. Yeah. <clears throat> and apparently, curtains are fucking expensive. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Especially when you need to cover 15 windows. Yeah. On one level. Yeah. Not counting the bedrooms upstairs. Dear God. But, so we downgraded. We moved to a single story, three bedroom house. <laughs> and yeah, the boys share a room. And no, I don't care. And yeah, they're probably always going to share rooms. Hey, I shared a room with my brothers until I'm, we moved out. Perspective here. How many were in your room? Okay. When it was before, when we lived in Phoenix, when I was a kid, there was three boys and three girls and all three boys shared a room and all three girls shared a room when I was older and it was just the three boys. And then one Mikey and there were four boys. Now let's throw this in there. Mikey has always had his own room. <laughs> always. Aww. Totally gyp. Half brother always <laughs> had a, had his own room. Um, but for a time there were the three older boys all shared a room. And then Mikey had his room. So, in our house, we have it to where it's two boys to a room. Yeah. The two older and then the two younger. Yeah. Sammy's still in our room in his, like, bassinet pack and play thing. Um, going to be relocated. He will be. He'll, he'll He's get, only been here a few weeks. He'll get kicked out and moved into his own bedroom with Bug eventually. If I can bear the separation. <laughs> that has always been a tough one. <laughs> I don't know. Call me weird. Maybe it's just a mom thing, but the sound of them snoring is just really comforting. And it's not the same when you hear it on the monitor, because then it's just fucking creepy. <laughs> but. So now we live well within our means. We yeah. live well yeah. within our means, not yeah. well within. Yeah. Does that make sense? We live. We live well. Nicely. Within Nicely our means. within our means. <laughs> We Whereas, don't have extra money. We have enough. Yeah. Whereas in the other house, just the general upkeep of the house was quite draining. It really was. Especially in the summer with that, such a huge house, trying to keep that cooled 
when it's 110, 115 outside, all and those everybody, windows. And, well, and the worst part is, you know, everybody will tell you, oh, you want to cut costs? Well, raise your temperature, your thermostat temperature during the day. Okay, yeah, that's that. fine. We did that. But you also have to keep in mind, we have to keep it livable because you were home during the day yeah. with children and pets. Yeah, everybody always talks about that. They always say, oh, uh, raise your thermostat up during the day. And, and that that's presuming that you're at work. They're always assuming you're not home. Like, and can put it at like 80, and Yeah, so I was like, oh, set it at 85 and then like get a programmable thermostat that'll automatically change and then have it like an hour before you come home and bring the temperature down so it's hot during the day, but it cools down, which fairly fair enough. Anybody who's like a AC professional will tell you don't do that entirely because it'll exert more energy trying to bring that yeah. temperature back down. Yeah. Then it will. It actually uses less it, energy to keep your AC on all day. To maintain it, than it does to. It basically <clears throat> cranks into high gear to bring it down at like ten degrees that you yeah. offset it. Um, but we learned some tricks to get around that. I, I want to replace the thermostat in this house too, for that reason. Definitely. Um, but, but yeah, we had to keep the we had to keep the temperature. You know, livable. it had to be livable because I was home. It was me and three boys and the dogs and and fish that were you know fish are water yeah. temperature sensitive. So I couldn't raise the temperature up to eighty five, even with ceiling fans and everything. It's like no, Mm-mm. we had to live. We had to be comfortable. It'd be miserable if I had to raise the house. Like, I'm okay with a warmer house than you are, but even I have my limits. Yeah. No, I I, I prefer Eskimo cold. 60s yeah. is perfect you, for me. You'd set the thermostat to 60 in the winter. Oh, it'd be amazing. Could you imagine? It feels so great. You'd turn the AC on when it's 40 degrees out. I would. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for my summer home in Washington. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah, you can go there yourself. Wow. <laughs> you can vacation in Washington. Really? By I myself? Like, all by my- Seriously? I will stay here. I'm not going all, up to Washington. All by myself. All by myself. You can take the boys. Fuck. <laughs> I shouldn't have kept going. I should have just gone with You can it. go okay, take bye. the boys skiing. I'll stay here. <laughs> yeah. There's a good plan. Hey, Damien, strap some sticks on your feet and go down this hill. <laughs> that won't end badly at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that but that house i mean our primary it was it was a nice house it was it was it was i mean it was a huge it was a damn impressive house yeah for for just for house sake it, and it looked good because it was a huge house and it was like the only huge house like that on, on the block so it looked great but the upkeep of such a large house was just too much it really was and the water for the yard the I'll be the interested AC, the to electricity, see, all that. I'll be interested to see the comparison to here because we are not responsible for setting up the utilities here. Yeah. We pay their discounted commercial rates because it's actually it's all billed to the property managers and they bill us. Yeah. So there's like a third. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out because we haven't seen yeah. our utilities here. And we haven't been doing our responsible electric stuff here yeah, no, yet. Yeah, this which first month is going to kind of just be a write-off, but... Yeah, we're not going to be able to use this first month as a as a test to see. It's, no. I'm imagining it's probably going to be higher than our, our normal bills. Oh, I'm sure. I, I put a pretty high number on the budget book, so I'm anticipating quite a bit, but... Yeah. But that's also the, like, kind of in the thing is that we do have a budget book and play everything mm-hmm. out every month yep it's like we expect and we overestimate i think that's the key to our system is to completely overestimate what you're going to pay well you even overestimate- when, like within within like you know as like you know yeah my bills are typically around this and slightly overestimate your what you're gonna put to account for fluctuation yeah well what i do is i underestimate our income yeah so like your checks i put what the bare minimum is Typically on your checks. Yeah. And same for mine. You know, what is the minimum that I I usually bring home? And that's what I put on the budget book for for each check for us. And then, yeah, like for expenses, I overestimate. Yeah. And, you know, typically once it starts getting warmer, I'll put what our summer bills typically run. Yeah. Um, just to kind of mentally prepare like, okay, well, this is where we have to be, so... 
Yeah. And we start picking up some overtime. <laughs> but, but if we were barely making it in the winter, then we need to like, start picking up the overtime in the summer because we need to cover the extra electric bill. Yeah. Which we're getting into because it's already May and it's starting to warm up. We're expecting more hundreds soon. Ugh, we've already hit a hundred. Once, but they're expecting it like 102 on Thursday. So we need to start paying. We need to start you know, pushing the overtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, I mean, we've, we've learned a lot. And I think we're we're doing really well now, and it's hard, you know. We ha- we're a family of six. Six had to count. Sorry. Six plus <laughs> lots of animals. Six, yeah, six humans, two cats, a dog, four fish, and a tortoise. That that, that adds up. You don't think pets are going to eat it? Pets eat away budget. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to think about it. We have a thirty-gallon fish tank with four fish, and they're not, you know, just goldfish. They are. South American cichlids. How do you say that? Chicklets? Cichlids. Chicklets? They're not chicklets. <laughs> they are not little square pieces of gum. <laughs> South American... Chicklets. 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 Cichlids. Cichlids. A, um, a variety of South American cichlids. Yeah, they're jewel cichlids, I think is what they're called. I thought they were Two blood parrot. Them. They're like blood parrot cichlids. Or Maybe. something like that. Yeah, they're like, and then one's a convict cichlid. Acon? Convict? <laughs> uh, it's funny. And then we have an algae eater. So 30 gallon fish tank takes quite a bit of maintenance. You know, you got to do your tank changes. You got to do your filtration. Yeah, changes. The amount of just changing it out. That's a lot of water <laughs> yeah. for a right for a standard cleaning. That That's a lot of water to change out on a regular basis. And then filter costs and food and the, the extra hell, the electri- extra electricity of these, you know, the pumps and the, the aerators and the lights and all that stuff running 24 hours a day. Yeah. Why do we have a fish tank? <laughs> I really don't. I know. We adopted the fish again, like everything else, like all of our animals. We adopted these fish. We, we absorbed these fish. No, the only animal that is actually 100% adopted is Toby. Everybody else was inherited. Yeah, we inherited <laughs> these fish. From my sister who could not keep them when she moved. So. I like the sound of the water. I think it's soothing. We could get a little waterfall feature that would that would not require feeding. <laughs> we don't have to feed a waterfall. We don't have to feed a waterfall. <laughs> but. Dad has one of those. But yeah, I mean, the animals, they, they do. You got, there's, you know, fish maintenance. There's fish food. There's cat litter. There's cat food. Dog food. Dog food. And we don't have a small dog. We have, you know, we don't have a, a, we have a, a terrier. We have a Dalmatian lab. We have a cow. Who, your option is buy the 50 pound bag or buy two. We have a cow. We have a cow. <laughs> and we've got he two cats. a lab who- Dalmatian mix who is very, very, very obese. Very. He's gotten lazy in his old age, so he's, yeah. You know. It's fat. He's gotten fat. But, yeah, I mean, it, a, a dog of his... And it needs a Fitbit. It would only track, I, like, a hundred steps a day. Aww, <laughs> and that's all four legs. But he... Aww. <laughs> but he is a, a dog of his stature, even if he weren't overweight. A dog of his stature eats a lot. Yeah. Necessitates a large amount of food. So... Just going to buy dog food is quite a, a chunk on the on the grocery budget. Yep. Buying cat food is a chunk and litter and it's it's a chunk on the budget. I think that's it is. just dog food, cat food, litter mm-hmm. in one and that's, you know, yeah, of that's course, around fifty to seventy dollars. Of course, we would have the picky animals who literally will not Only eat if eat we don't things. Yeah, they won't eat if we don't get the right food or like the cats. They have to get the right litter. Have to get the right litter or they're gonna pee on fucking everything. Yeah. Ugh. The animal subject, that's a that's a that's a that's a whole other that's show. A whole other show. <laughs> you could do just the fucking animals. <clears throat> but but yeah. and then, you know, I've also got a factor into our budget, the fact that we have children upkeep. And those of you who have children know diapers are not cheap. I mean, they are, but you don't want to get are, the There are again, cheap options for diapers, but you don't want the don't cheap want the- <laughs> option. And then, so now we have started supplementing with formula for Sammy to help him gain some weight and hopefully catch up 
due to the whole low growth hormone thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so now we've got to factor in formula, which is like $30 for a tiny little tub. Yeah. Especially like name brand <clears throat> formula is so ungodly expensive. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's gouging. It is. It's, it has to be. Now I will admit that if you're getting the Similac or the, uh, the, 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 the I'm just thinking Infamil. Infamil. I was going to say in short. It's, like, it's not in short. <laughs> um, or Infamil. Those do digest better. Yeah. Than like house brand. Than like a house brand for a store. But nutritionally. They're all the same. They're all nutritionally identical. They because have be. they have to be per FDA guidelines. They all have to meet the same di- like, nutritional uh, guidelines. So the only difference is basically the digestibility. Yeah. And like, you know what? If I've got to change a few more dirty diapers because he can't digest the solids in the formula as if I had given him Similac, fine. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Diapers are cheaper than formula. (laughs) Far. (laughs) There's basically two boxes, like the big boxes of diapers. Two of those to one tub of formula. And yeah. one tub of formula will last us about a week. Yeah. Well, and you, got, you have to That's stop and think about tub. it. Our kids are kind of at that age and in those age ranges where they're not all in the same thing. We've got two that are fully potty trained. One that's in pull-ups. Yeah. And one that's Which in Which are diapers. also in godly expensive. Pull-ups are freaking ridiculous. You Basically, they're like double the cost of diapers. Which makes no sense because they have half the padding. Yeah. Yeah, gouging. Gouging. <laughs> I will say though, I, I, because we've been, we've, ex- we experimented with diapers and we've, we've, we've tell everybody, every parent that we meet, um, pampers and huggies are great and all. It's they're, not they're not worth, worth they're, the cost difference, they're really not worth it. Mm-mm. Um, if you want a name brand diaper that is quality and inexpensive, go loves. Oh yeah. All the way. All the way. Um, and we've even just like with a, a leak test, loves have been very good to us Yeah. in their absorbency. We were, we've had a lot of failure with pampers and huggies in the past. Yep. Um, I will say and huggies I mean, are great for newborns. They are. The newborn huggies are great. Actually pampers. I prefer Is it pampers. Well, that, those are the ones that you get in the hospital. Yeah. Which I mean, uh, yeah, I was trying to remember which one had like the good cutouts and this was cut very well. Like just the, the, the diaper, the lines of the trim, the design of it. Probably Huggies because they have... functionally stronger, yeah. which is a better design overall. It wasn't like an absorbency thing. It was a matter of the shape of it was better suited to the actual, like, it was just a better shape to the diaper. Yeah, but... I mean, those are all things that you have to factor into a budget for our family, at least for, you know, most families. Those are things that you have to consider. One thing that we haven't factored into our budget yet, uh, at least as far as talking Mm -hmm. about our budget on this show. Yeah. Food. Oh, yeah. There's that. For a family of six. Yeah. That's when you've got anybody ranging from nine months to 32, 36. How old are you? 31. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> You're trying to make yourself sound that much worse. What? I'm only 25. Yeah, and if I were 36? 25. Yeah. And if I were 36? 25. And you're 25? You already call me old. I mean, you are. You're already giving me crap last week saying, oh man, like your whole shtick about you're still 25. Like when I get closer to 40, it's going to look really bad on you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as long as we're rich, then who cares? <laughs> we're not. Yeah. Unless you guys want to pay us. If you guys feel like paying <laughs> us, patreon.com, look us up. It's great. <laughs> we could put out more shows. Yeah. It'd be so much fun. Or we could just, you know, be getting paid for this. That'd be great, too. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Plug, plug, sponsor, donate. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, we've also got to factor in feeding a family of six. So, you know, it's, it's been a journey to kind of get to the point where we are now. Like the food thing is especially been, that's, that's been a long growth learning process. It really has because, you know, you can look on Pinterest, you can look on everything, you know, how to 
keep your groceries at a certain, everything says menu plan, menu, 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 menu. So that's what I did. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's what we need to do. I need to make a menu. Yeah. For every week, which to me, when you say make a menu, that's Monday. We're having spaghetti. Tuesday, we're having fish. Th- you know, Tuesday, we're having uh, lemon, lemon chicken. Yeah. With, you know, you the know, side of whatever. Yeah, that's what I thought it was yeah. like specific set meals. And that's for what, kind of what they, what they almost always do. It's I'm going to have a menu. This is the dish I'm making this day. This is so you know, exactly. ahead, and you shop to the menu. Yeah. We did that. We did that. It, Ugh, it was horrible. It was such a God awful idea. It was hard because, it, you know, then stupid us, we didn't buy anything for lunches because we still have kids that are home during the day and yeah. Adam is still home during the day. Got to eat lunch. You shopped to the menu and you completely disregarded the fact that you still need lunches. You still need snacks. You still need other filler food. You need breakfast. You need, yeah, you need breakfast, <laughs> lunch. You need other parts of this. You need, you know, um, alternatives. Yeah. That was the biggest thing was alternatives because you get home on a Monday night and it's like, I don't want to fucking make lemon garlic baked chicken with twice baked potato skins. And I don't feel like making this or I don't feel like eating this today. Yeah. Like I'm not feeling spaghetti tonight. What do I want to make? But you can't do that. You can't do that because that's all you've got. Yeah. Yeah. And otherwise it just kind of throws everything off. Mm hmm. So we did that. It didn't work. We did out here in Arizona. You have a plethora of grocery stores to choose from. We did the whole, you know, we're going to get the cheapest ground beef here. And then we're going to go over here for milk. And then we're going to go over here for, all of the, you know, yeah, vegetables. The, and the, 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 it's like the bar hopping of grocery stores. <laughs> you're basically like you're you're jumping from store to store to store to get the best deals and you're you're sitting there with all the ads and you go through and you plot you're like, okay, we're gonna go to this store first and we're gonna swing over this way and do this one and we're gonna like you're just gonna run in and get ground beef and then we're gonna come out and then we're gonna go to that store and we're gonna do the bulk of the show the rest, get everything else there and Well no, this is before we started doing it that way. This was when we would go for meats specifically at one place and yeah, then that's what I mean you know like you, this over here and we were hitting four and five stores every time like, oh we yeah we need to go to shopping. sam's and we need to go to sam's and get diapers wipes and and formula at sam's and then we need to go over to we need to go over here and get uh because they've got the cheap ground beef and chicken and we're gonna run just run in there and get ground beef and chicken yeah and then, but you know that that made it difficult because then we spent literally an entire all day fucking day it was basically we'd probably spend four hours of grocery oh, shopping easily easily just between bouncing around between stores and with stuff like oh yeah we had meat we got to go home yeah we got to swing by the house to drop it all off it was a you, you had to have a map you had to have a plan of okay we're gonna go here then here then here this and oh we can't go from here to there because we have to drop this off because we can't go into that store and leave this in the car yeah so it it was hard it, it wasn't it wasn't efficient. And I mean, out here in Surprise, where we live, we were pretty centrally located to all the stores that we would yeah. hit up anyway. So we it live wasn't in a very like, convenient location for that because yeah. everything is right around within a mile or two. So it's very convenient right here, but it's still a lot to bounce around. Well, but it wasn't like we were driving 30 minutes to get this stuff. No, we were driving like two, but we were driving around to all these different stores. Yeah. That was the issue. So that didn't work. It, it just, it wasn't working. So we scrapped that idea. Now the way we do it, it's still quote unquote menu, but it's more of a theme. Um, so Monday now is pizza night and no, we don't order in and no, we don't buy pre-made pizza. It's not DiGiorno. It's not delivery. It's not DiGiorno. I make pizza from scratch. It's delicious. Every single Monday. Every Monday. And from and I don't mean like oh I buy a, I don't go buy a bubbly and and make it you a know, what bubbly you know those are those those pre made pizza crusts I thought it was boboli 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 I go with the way the guy pronounced it in the commercial with the fake Italian accent boboli whatever anyway 
Can I, we don't watch commercials anymore since we cut the cords. I have no clue. <laughs> I haven't seen a Boboli commercial in like 10 years. <clears throat> Boboli. Whatever. Um, Maybe it's Boboli. Maybe it's Boboli. Uh, whatever. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't buy my crust. No. I make my crust. Yep. From a bag of fucking flour. Mm-hmm. A bag of flour, a jar, because we use so much. I mean, we got a jar of yeast in the fridge. Mm-hmm. You know, we go through it. We go through it. I can only go maybe two. Well, not too late. We go. It probably used that jar of yeast in about a month. Yeah. Well, and I stopped making bread every weekend. Yeah. So there was a point where we, we were even making our own bread for a while, but yep. we just need a different bread. We had a we have a bread machine, <laughs> which is damn convenient. If you I have the it. option, that is a great way to conserve. Uh, because yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> if you are able to get a bread machine, get one. We're actually looking to get an upgraded bread machine. I'm so excited. Um, where it makes like two loaves at a time, or one really big loaf at a time. Yeah, or, so we can, and it has like can be not. auto theater for like your add-ins. It's gonna be, it's just fantastic. I can't wait. Yeah, but that's a great thing to have. Just. Because you can do so much with it. Yeah, and they last for fucking ever. Our bread machine was a hand me down from my parents, which was a hand me down from my grandma. Yeah, you know she still had works it. great. Yeah, she had it. She used it like all the time for everything, from you know just a loaf of bread to cinnamon rolls to. And you can use everything. it for stuff just like when we started doing the pizza crust. It was mm-hmm. just use the, the bread machine just to mix the dough. You yeah. can just mix, and you can do that for other breads and for other things, too. You can just mix the dough in the machine, mm-hmm. turn it out, and there you go, roll it out, do your thing. Um, but there are six of us, so I have to make two pizzas, and it just can't hold that much. Yeah. So every Monday, I will sit there with the, my mountain of flour and my yeast and all of my stuff and my 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 Pizza Hut clone recipe that I found. <laughs> you know, go Pinterest. Hashtag Pinterest. Hashtag Pinterest. Can you hashtag Pinterest? That seems like it's it's a conflict of interest. <laughs> um, but is it a conflict of Pinterest? <laughs> oh my god, your puns! Uh, I know they're hilarious, right? <laughs> uh, but I, I sit there and and only yourself. Sure. And I sit there and hand roll and ha- hand knead two sixteen inch pizzas yep every week every week and you know what tuesday is my second favorite day of the week because (laughs) tuesday i get to take pizza leftovers to work for lunch yep and i recently discovered a recipe for for breadsticks too so those (sighs) those came out good yeah they were so we have we have it set to where you know every monday is pizza and it's really open to interpretation because you could do pizza you could do strombolis you could do calzones calzones you could (laughs) You know, whatever. You could do any type of pizza that you want. Cheese, pepperoni, sausage, supreme, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So it's not like it it's not limiting. Yeah. Tuesday, it's you know, we it the easy version is Taco Tuesday. <laughs> but it's not. We keep it kind of open. It's more Because of a, it's a nice it's a nice name for it, but yeah. it's it's Mexican night. It's Mexican night. We'll have, you know, fajitas, Spanish rice. We'll do straight up tacos. We'll do nachos, you know, whatever. It's Mexican night. It's Mexican night. Wednesday is typically our crock pot night. That's when we'll have like pot roast or whatever. Yeah. Generally, it's just pot roast. It's typically it's pot roast because it's just a really easy, convenient, and it's a sturdy meal. Yeah. The- I like the crock pot days because I can start that in the morning and walk away. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to sit there when it's like time to get dinner ready and I'm sitting here cooking. I don't have to worry about it. So I kind of like those days. I start that <laughs> and I can leave it the fuck alone. <laughs> Thursday's pasta, which that's huge, huge category. Yeah. You know, you can go any fucking way with that from as simple as spaghetti to a little more complicated with chicken alfredo to, yeah. you know, lasagna. Or do a, uh, a, goulash. Uh, or goulash or a, uh, a, 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 a chicken parmesan uh, casserole. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, obviously any pasta dish you can dream up, pasta night. Friday, every single Friday, no matter what, beans. We make a crock pot of beans. 
Super easy. Yeah. Deny it all you want. Because you're Mexican. I'm Mexican. No, we are fucking not. And I grew up in a household where you had beans. And, uh, and no, grew up in a, you grew, grew up, up in, in a, a Catholic, household. Grew up in a Catholic household where during Lent you had beans every Friday because it was meatless. And then Saturday and Sunday, it's kind of yeah, sandwiches. Saturday, and yeah, Saturday is typically like left, and I'm usually working, and that's usually because I'm not typically home on Saturday to cook. Now Monday through Friday, people, I cook every single night. I cook, not you, because you can't cook for crap. No, nope. you want a bowl of cereal? I can manage that. But yeah, past that's that, about it. I'm you not don't allowed cook. in the kitchen. I cook. I do I, all the cooking. I burn myself. I do all the cooking, and I cook everything from scratch five days a week. Well, I guess six days a week. Sunday too. Um, hey, I cook stuff on Saturdays. Sometimes I gotta heat up the mac. Sometimes the mac you gotta cheese. heat up the mac and cheese. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Saturday is typically uh, leftovers and sandwiches and kind of more snacky it's the looser day yeah that's the day you might have mac and cheese and chicken nuggets or hot dogs or sandwiches or and stuff like that yeah and then sunday is supposed to be supposed to be and i say we haven't been keeping to sundays as much because our schedules have been really wonky but it's supposed to be comfort food Mm. which is such a blanket category that it could be anything really yeah we've we flat out done pizza night on on sunday because hey pizza's a comfort food yeah I'm we've comforted. done we've done we've done fried chicken we've done we'll do breakfast we'll do breakfast. It, it's, yeah it's, it's breakfast like a, is a can, pretty common one for us on sundays just because it's it's you know it's easy it's sunday. do a pancakes and sausage and <laughs> eggs and all that stuff on sunday yep so i mean instead all from of scratch. doing that's the most important thing about everything it's all from scratch exactly every day of the week is something from scratch we don't go and buy olive garden on pasta night you know we don't if it's comfort night or whatever, we're not buying burgers. We no. don't even buy burgers anymore. No, we don't go out to We eat. went like nine months without purchasing any fast food at all. Yep. I even, like, we got to the point where I made hamburger buns from scratch. Oh, they were so good, too. I've been, like, I learned how to make pretzels just so I could have, like, make pretzel bites. hamburger buns and pretzel bites and things. Yeah. You know. And, I mean, that has been such a huge revelation to us. Is that so much of your stuff goes so much farther, your money goes so much farther, your food goes so much farther when you are making it yourself. Not even in like a hippie way. We're not doing it. It's no. like just from a financial perspective that this was our best option. Yeah. Especially when you get to be a family of six. Yeah. Going out to eat. It, McDonald's is 40 bucks. Yeah. Because Which that's so a tank of gas, us. you that's, know? That's, that's a tank of gas in my van. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's a lot more economical for us. It makes a lot more sense. So yeah. something that I want to start working on, a challenge that I'm kind of setting for us is not necessarily make ahead meals because we tried that and it sucked and it didn't work. Yeah, it, it, it too, only some things you can really plan too far ahead. But I do want to start kind of a, a a easier lunch route because I know lunches turn into That's sandwiches or chicken nuggets or yeah, just kind of which I also make from scratch. You know, mac and cheese. Yeah. Well, a, no, it's, we've it's got a, a bag of chicken nuggets. We've got boxes of mac and cheese. That's yeah. what I want to get rid of. Is getting rid of the the bag and the process. Yeah, like there are nights where I'll make, where I'll do like chicken nuggets and stuff like that, or we'll do like chicken strips and mashed potatoes and stuff like that from scratch. But I do have a box of of, of chicken nuggets in the freezer, and we do have boxes of mac and cheese on the shelf. And right. yeah, I would like to. Those are some things that are so labor intensive because they're typically used as quick meals right but to do them from scratch is so labor intensive that it does become it's a lot harder it's harder a lot less do. feasible to do it for lunch yeah especially I can't do when chicken nuggets for lunch no well especially right when you consider that you've got you <coughs> and two boys to feed plus you also have to feed a baby yeah who obviously takes a bottle at this point. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, and he doesn't take it himself. You have to hold him and feed him. So he's not one of those kids. You can just, here's your bottle. Okay. Yeah. No, not yet. Just like that. He'll just tell you, okay. Okay. 
No, he's nine months old. <laughs> so he's not quite there yet. So yeah, you need something that's quick like that. But I want us to find, that's kind of my challenge is to get away from having to buy or even having to buy the box of waffles that we get for breakfast, you know, that require a waffle lighter. I mean, yeah, but we could also make pancakes ahead of time and just freeze. Which we did for a while. That was, that was also a good one that worked out because I just made, and we've tried to do it and every time it's failed simply because the plan would be, okay, we're going to make pancakes and we'll have pancakes and then I'll make a bunch of extra pancakes and and we'll freeze them. them. Like plan is freeze them for later. And that worked in the past where we made a bunch extra pancakes and froze them and they were great convenient Mm -hmm. breakfast and they really worked and it was great. Yep. And we didn't have a bowl of cereal in the morning. You, you know, pulled out some pancakes and had, and they reheat nicely and you just had pancakes. The problem is that when I make pancakes, I'll try and make extra pancakes and everybody will eat them all. They're really good. And I'll be left with like four extra pancakes. <laughs> I'm like, okay, who wants any of these last four pancakes? <laughs> Me, I'll take them. So much for freezing pancakes. <laughs> but I kind of, I want to get... I want to but start doing some, we that. We need to get back into that. Yeah, because I mean that'll that'll help reduce our budget just that much more. Absolutely. And it, like I said, you know, moving here was enough of a downgrade. <clears throat> was a downgrade, and it's enough of a downgrade that it's already helping our budget. Yeah. So just the rent change mixed yeah. with the, and we know this monthly electricity is going to be high, probably high for this house, but it's going to be much lower than the other house. Oh, I hope so. Because, dear God, $600 electric bills are just fucking Yeah, killer. when that happened, that was just, that was the biggest shock. Yeah. That really made it, forced us to change everything. But we got so used to living so tight in that house that now that we're in a house that's not going to need to be so tight, keeping those reins exactly. on like that will make it to where we are in a better position. Exactly. And that's going to be kind of our challenge to ourselves is... Just because we have the ability now to to lax because some of the other things in the yeah. butter freed up. Like, I don't want us to... We don't need to start going out to eat all the time just because yeah. we have that little bit of wiggle room in the budget. Yeah, um, well, and I don't want us to, like, slack on, you know, the electricity or, you know, start running the dishwasher all fucking day long or... Yeah. <clears throat> you know... Things like that. Making just, use of peak and unpeak and off peak hours. Well, we don't have that anymore, but I don't know. We gotta look we'll we'll find that out once we get our first electric bill in this, <laughs> this house. This is true. Which should be within the next couple of weeks. Hope so. In theory. <clears throat> but yeah, so I mean we've 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 done better as we've grown and acquired children. I shouldn't say acquired children. Acquired? You say like we just picked them up (laughs) off the side of the road. I stole this one from, you know, park down the street. No, unfortunately, I've I've got the scars to prove that all four of them are mine. If any of you listeners out there want more details about our budget, our budget book, be happy to share it with you. Reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, send me an email, momanddadcuss at gmail.com. I'll gladly share with you what works for us and you can see if it works for you. It, it's not- a skeleton and I think that's what everybody needs, a skeleton of a plan. Yeah. Um, we can tell you what we do exactly. It's not going to be the same thing for you. No, it's not. And You have to take that skeleton and... And flesh it out yourself Mm -hmm. with what is going to fit your situation and your circumstance and the best way for you to implement the, the basics. Right. And make it a full plan for you. Our full plan has taken us several years to flee. I mean, we're still, we're still working on it. There's still certain challenges that I have set for us. Yeah. Like, let's try to do this this month and see if it works. And okay, here we go. Yeah. You know, so we're still hashing it out and maybe yeah. by the time we retire we'll have it done i don't know but you know yeah you can't i can't tell you word for word dollar by dollar cuz that's not going to work for you it's what works for us yeah i i can give you a basic layout and you can see if it works for you and i'd be glad to yeah this isn't a financing show but you know what this is a parenting show <laughs> and parents got to help each other out it takes and I a think village. that's one of the, it takes a village, yeah. Although that would be weird. That's one of, but that is one of those things that I think every parent really has to learn. Mm-hmm. That's a huge. Hello, computer. Yeah, the computer is yelling at me again. 
But that is, yeah, that's the thing that when you become a parent, when you get married in general, but then when you become a parent, financing and budgeting, that becomes so important. That's one of the biggest lessons you have to learn among all of the ways to just not kill your kid. Or each other. Or each other. (laughs) Like, you know, make sure you don't do this because it'll probably kill your kid. Like, oh, make sure, you know, and there's some stuff's idiot proof and then some things are like, really? (laughs) There's lots of ways, you know, it's really easy to kill the small child. Yeah. And then the stress of almost killing your small child on a regular (laughs) basis leads to your, to the, you know, almost killing your spouse, uh, you know, accidentally. Air quotes. Great. Guys, um, if I don't show up for work tomorrow, y'all know what happened. <laughs> you're on the run because my body's probably dumped in a ditch. I would never do that. You already know my plan. For if I have... Never mind. <laughs> if I share it, then I'll get caught. <laughs> if you share the plan right now, it goes out on the internet and the authorities... <laughs> It's not a plan to kill you. It's a plan for disposal if I have to ever kill somebody. Okay. Just in case. Yeah. Okay. There's no premeditation here. There's just, you know, forethought. (laughs) It's a strategy. Anyway. (laughs) But... Yeah, well, you know, they say that the number one thing that um, couples fight about and that's hard for couples to get over and get past is money. It's finances. It's money because it's such a big it because it's a stress everybody has. And then when you have to share that stress with another person, it almost turns into a blame thing, too. Yeah. But yeah. I, I totally see it. And we went through that. We've gone through. Yeah. We have had a very rough seven years. We have. And we have. For a young couple, yeah. We have gone through so much crap in seven years. It's it's quite surprising that we're still together in that respect because there's the stuff that we've gone through. A lot of couples probably would have walked away. But. Hmm. Maybe because well, we, we're both we went st- through that too. We but... went through that too. We went through a, a point where it almost ended. Yeah, but we're still here. Yeah. We've mm-hmm. pulled through. We've pulled through, and we've let the financial stuff not be the problem that it is for a lot of other people. I think because yeah. it is one of those. Like, the problem is always going to be there. It's always going to be there, no matter whether you're married. Whether you have kids, whether you're single, it's still something you need to figure out and learn. It's a, it's a just being an adult thing. Yep. So, yeah. Fun. Money <laughs> is fun. Money, money fucking sucks. That's the deal. It's that true. is the fundamental problem is that money sucks and <clears throat> dealing with money sucks. Having money is great, but you, you still have to give it away to other people to <laughs> live. Yeah. Doesn't matter how much you take in, you still have to give away a lot to, to continue existing. Yep. I can't wait for us to have our castle in Scottsdale. It's going to be so pretty. (laughs) With like two kitchens, personal chef, indoor pool. (sighs) Because you love my cooking so much, you want to hire a personal chef. That's why we have two kitchens, one for me, one for the chef. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have to cook. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do all day, but at that point, I'm going to be staying at home. Maybe we can send the kids to boarding school. Then why would we have a castle? For me, duh. Okay. This this is a this is a topic for another show. Okay. So I'm not high maintenance, I swear. I just like pretty things. <laughs> you have any WTF moments for this week, dear? Oh, dear Besides God. that exact statement right there? <laughs> Shit, I shouldn't have to say in this house. What? I'm not high maintenance. I'm not high maintenance. Well, I would call myself like medium maintenance. But, well, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I've got one, unfortunately. So, you know, baby gates, right? It's their thing. Some of them are walk through, some of them are not. Some of them are just pressure. Like, they just kind of 
push to the walls. Whatever, that's how they stand. Some you bolt into the walls, and some are just kind of held there by sheer force. Right, but some you can, like, open and walk through. Some are, like, gates, and some are just, like, a fence that you prop in a wall. Exactly. Or, like, prop so, in a way, yeah. those are the ones that we had. We've gotten our walkthrough gate up in our room, at least. We need to get the boys up. Um... Because that one has to get bolted, so I've got to measure and drill and crap for that one. But before we got our walkthrough gate up to our bedroom, we had just one of the pressure ones. <laughs> and here comes Damien walking down the hall, and I hear him coming. I'm like, all right, fine. And I hear him start to climb over the gate, and then I hear, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Mommy, my thinking got stuck. Well, Damien, if you wouldn't climb over the fences without pants, it wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> when did this happen? It was the other night. I can't believe I didn't tell you. No, I never heard about this. <laughs> I thought this was going to be the gate fell down on him story. And nope. I was like, oh my God. What is it with him and catching his thing and things? <laughs> No, I don't toilet. have one, so I don't know the inconveniences of getting it caught somewhere, but he's gotten it caught so he's, many He is injured upon his wang in more times <laughs> than your average four-year-old, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, he got Does it. it say something about him that he so easily gets it stuck in places? Oh, jeez. You know, oh. not to comment on the size of our child's junk, but if he's able to get it stuck in a fence. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. I I, I don't know. <laughs> Shit, I should not have to say in my house. You need to wear pants when you climb over baby gates. So you just need to wear pants. I mean, I know you are. You're a pajama pants are are. Pajama are pants are optional. Pants optional. Yeah, Underwear yeah. required. Pants optional. Fair. <laughs> he idea. was wearing neither. He was wearing neither, so that's what happens. Yep. <laughs> Do you have a a moment of the week? I I think I might have, and I just completely blanked it when I I got sideswiped by an <laughs> unexpected story. <laughs> oh, we'll give you a minute. Is yeah. I because like all I've said before, all of the funniest stuff happens. When they're not with me, I am I am the humdrum day to day <laughs> stuff. The more exciting stuff happens when they're with you because it's, it's your time with them is a little more limited because you get home from work so late that your dinner and bed, and you get the fighting for bed and the weird things that happen <laughs> come end of night. You know, I've got yeah. the point in the day where they're just kind of chilling, watching TV and playing with trucks. <laughs> no, I, I don't get, I, I get the crazy side. Or the the weekends where they're being really crazy. And it's the difference because that's the daytime where mom is 100% in charge versus I'm in charge during the day all the rest of the time. So they act different. Yeah. But. No, I, I get the, I get the weird shit. Well, I don't know if it really, it's not so much a WTF or a point or a, a, a thing we shouldn't have to say, but it was quite funny today when you were grocery shopping and Damien just completely out of left field starts singing Pat Benatar. Oh, jeez, That was hilarious. And not only that, I mean, he butchered the hell out of it, but okay, you recorded it. So you, yeah, you got to listen to this. <laughs> okay, he butchered the crap out of it, but you know what he was singing. You, yeah, you, you get the gist of it. And He's not, yeah. you know, going down the only road he's never known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which he still sings all the time. He really does. But that was completely out of left field. We have no, I don't remember hearing that song once this week, but just <laughs> out of nowhere, we pull into the Fry's parking lot and he starts singing that. that so that was funny. 
That was, yeah. Like, it doesn't really fit into any of the crazy stuff, but it was just a silly and a totally a Damien thing because he, he just does that stuff. I swear, that kid comes with his own theme music. He's never not singing. Yeah. Or, you know, just running around. <laughs> it's always all some time. sort of little singy noises. Always. All the time. He's always got to have his theme music going. He, he's destined to be a superhero. <laughs> not if he keeps getting his wang stuck in stuff. I said a superhero, not a father. <laughs> <laughs> What's his superpower? <laughs> it's his superpower. Getting his wings stuck in fences. <laughs> this is his superpower. To the rescue. Just give me like 10 minutes. I'll be there. Hold on. Does anybody have an ice pack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my poor kid. I think we're done. I think that's enough for tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Remember to... Find us, search for us. If you haven't already found us, then find us. Although, if you haven't already found us, how did you find us? How did you find us? Why are you listening to this? You've made it this far without finding us. But if you haven't already done it, you need to subscribe because because we want you to. Because this is funny, and you listened this far. If you've made it to the point where we're telling you to subscribe, then, then you it. at least enjoyed the show this far. Just do it. So subscribe. Be like we're, Nike. Just do it. Just do it. You got if you, if you're an iPhone or i whatever user use iTunes. If you're an Android user, use the Google Play Music app. It's totally there. And no. so yeah, if you're a non-Apple person, if you're a, an Android person, Google Play Music app. Search for Mom and Dad Cuss. It's there. It's already built into your phone. So just just so just do it. Just go Nike. Just do it. Um, <laughs> And, you know, like us on the, the Mom and Dad Cuss Facebook page and all those other sort of fun things. And if you have any questions or you want more information on, on, on pizza recipes or, or or budgeting fun stuff or whatever, if you want a question for us, if you want a question, we'll just give you a question. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if he was purple? Ooh, ten, because aliens don't wear hats. I don't know. It suddenly got very Night Vale in here. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a Night Vale tweet. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> any questions or comments or or, or anything you want to converse with us, um, you can send it to us on the Facebook page or email us at momanddadcuss at gmail.com. And until next week, I've been Adam. You've been Adam. I've been Adam. Da, 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 da. I've been Rihanna. Da, da, da. But I may also have other names. But you may not know yet. <laughs> but that's all for now. Good have- night, everybody. <laughs> Bye.